Hello everyone, welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. We come today to the book of Jeremiah, and uh, we are in Jeremiah chapter 50, getting close to the end of this book. Having a good time, really am, going through the book of Jeremiah. And um, of course, you know, it's always fun to go through the Bible. Especially when you let God just speak to you and you don't have any agenda. You just, you know, want to learn the Word of God. God will speak to you. He'll bless you. I found that out. So, Jeremiah chapter 50. Grab your Bible if you're able to do that and follow along. And while you are looking for your Bible and hopefully not blowing the dust off of it, but opening it up to Jeremiah chapter 50, that gives me a minute to tell you about the Scripture Verse by Verse website. And I really do hope that you make use of this website because it's all about the Word of God. Really, the Bible, God's Word is my life, and it has been since I was saved 37 years ago. I just love the Bible. I have since day one. God called me to teach and preach a few years after I was saved. And uh, I didn't take it lightly, and I never have. And so I know what I'm called to do. And it's been what I've been doing for 30 years, and that's teaching the Bible from Genesis through Revelation. And it's all archived for you. I'm a saver when it comes to the Word of God. You can study the entire Bible using my audio Bible commentaries at thebibleversebyverse.com. So I really do hope that you check it out. But today we're in Jeremiah 50, beginning in verse 1. So let's pray. Our Father, we ask that you would bless your word, and I pray that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, this is a prophecy concerning Babylon, and actually the fall of Babylon. So we begin in verse 1. The word that the Lord spoke against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. And uh, remember, the uh, Chaldean, Chaldeans and Babylon are, in essence, the same thing. Verse 2, declare ye among the nations, and publish, and set up a standard. Publish and conceal not. Say, Babylon is taken. And that would be news. Because for years, Babylon, far and away, was the world's superpower. They were taking everybody else. But God says they're going to be taken. Bel is confounded. Merodach is broken in pieces. Her idols are confounded. Her images are broken in pieces. You know why that is? Her gods were destroyed. Because it wasn't her gods that made her great and powerful. It was Almighty God. Almighty God ordained that Babylon would be the world's first huge superpower. She didn't worship God. She didn't give God credit. She let her power and her arrogance go to her head. And now she's going to be destroyed. Verse 3, For out of the north there comes up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate, and none shall dwell therein. They shall remove, they shall depart, both man and beast. And uh, out of the north refers to the world's second great superpower, and that would be the Medes and the Persians, who would come from the north. Verse 4, In those days and at that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together, going weeping. They shall go and seek the Lord their God. Verse 5, they shall ask the way to Zion with their faces thitherward, saying, Come, and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go 
go astray. And remember, that's why the Israelites went into captivity and had their land destroyed. Because they didn't have faithful preachers giving them the pure word of God. They had a bunch of self-centered, selfish people calling themselves preachers and prophets who told the people what they wanted to hear for the sake of filthy lucre and personal popularity. And it led to destruction. So God says their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. Yeah, they sure did. They were worshiping idols. And their preachers were saying, well, it's okay, it's not a problem. Seven, all who found them have devoured them. And their adversaries said, we offend not because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. And the people who said we offend not were Israel's enemies. They thought, they thought that because Israel had sinned against the Lord and were therefore destined for judgment, that their actions as the rod of God's punishment were justified. It's just that, you know, in, in a sense that's true, but they went way above and beyond what they were supposed to do to Israel. Babylon had been kind to Jeremiah, the prophet. Nebuchadnezzar treated Jeremiah very well, a lot better than his fellow countrymen did. I'm talking about Israel. A lot better than Israel treated Jeremiah. And yet, in this chapter, as we have begun to see, Babylon is denounced by God, and it is proclaimed by the word of the Lord through Jeremiah that they will be judged, that they will be destroyed. So, although they had been very good to Jeremiah, Babylon was still very sinful, and therefore an enemy of God. And for that reason, Jeremiah had to speak against Babylon. Preachers cannot let personal feelings stop them from denouncing the sin of those who have been good to them. It's nothing personal. It's the word of God. It's faithfulness to God. You got to tell it like it is. Verse 8. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as the he goats before the flocks. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country and they shall set themselves in array against her from thence she shall be taken their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man none shall return in vain and Chaldea shall be spoil all who spoil her shall be satisfied, saith the Lord. Because you were glad, because you rejoiced, O ye destroyers of my heritage, because you are grown fat as the heifer at grass and bellow as bulls. God says, you're going to be judged because you were glad, because you rejoiced. And that refers to the fact that Babylon yeah, she was called by God to be his rod of punishment against the Israelites. Very true. But they went too far. I mean, they didn't show any pity toward God's people at all. And in fact, they rejoiced in the fact that they were slaughtering Israel. And see, this is something that God never condones. 
verse 12. Your mother shall be sore confounded. She who bore you shall be ashamed. Behold, the hindermost of the nations shall be a wilderness, a dry land, and a desert. Because of the wrath of the Lord, it shall not be inhabited, talking about Babylon, but it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone who goes by Babylon shall be astonished and hiss at all her plagues. And the reason that people are going to be astonished is because, like I said, Babylon was the first big superpower in the world. I mean, she had her way with all other nations, and all of a sudden she's completely wiped out. Well, why'd that happen? 13, because of the wrath of the Lord, it shall not be inhabited, but it shall be wholly desolate. Everyone who goes by Babylon shall be astonished and hissed, hiss at her plagues. Put yourselves in array against Babylon round about, all ye who bend the bow. Shoot at her, spare no arrows, for she has sinned against the Lord. Shout against her, round about. She has given her hand. Her foundations are fallen. Her walls are thrown down. For it is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance upon her, as she has done, do unto her. Cut off the sower from Babylon, and him who handles the sickle in the time of harvest. For fear of the oppressing sword, they shall turn every one to his people, and they shall flee every one to his own land. Verse 17, Israel is scattered sheep. The lions have driven him away. First the king of Assyria has devoured him, and Assyria did take care of the northern part of Israel. And last, this Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, has broken his bones, ripped to shred the entire nation of Israel because of their sins by Assyria at first, and now Babylon finishes them up. 18. Therefore thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will punish the king of Babylon and his land, as I have punished the king of Assyria. And I will bring Israel again to his habitation, and he shall feed on Carmel and Bashan. Carmel is not candy, by the way, it's a mountain. And his soul shall be satisfied upon Mount Ephraim and Gilead. In those days and at that time, saith the Lord, the iniquity of Israel shall be sought for, and there shall be none, and the sins of Judah, and they shall not be found, and I will pardon them whom I reserve. God would never be angry at a person if they wouldn't sin. But he was very angry at Babylon because it's in plenty. And God will turn Babylon the Great into a great wasteland after using her evil ways to wake his people up and cure them of their idolatry. 21. Go up against the land of Merathaim, even against it, and against the inhabitants of Pekod, waste and utterly destroy after them, saith the Lord, and do according to all that I have commanded you. Verse 22. A sound of battle is in the land and of great destruction. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How has Babylon become a desolation among the nations? And that's what Babylon was, especially under Nebuchadnezzar. He was God's hammer to break the nations, to judge other sinful nations. But then judgment fell upon Babylon because she rejected the word of God that God gave her 
warned her that she went too far. Verse 24. I have laid a snare for you, and you are also taken, O Babylon, and you were not aware. You are found and also caught, because you have striven against the Lord. The Lord has opened his armory and has brought forth the weapons of his indignation. For this is the work of the Lord God of hosts in the land of the Chaldeans come against her from the utmost border open her storehouses cast her up as heaps and destroy her utterly let nothing of her be left slay all her bullocks let them go down to the slaughter woe unto them for their day is come the time of their visitation the bullocks doesn't refer to cows it refers to the princes of Babylon the leadership verse 28 the voice of them who flee and escape out of the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God the vengeance of his temple the vengeance of the Lord our God and the vengeance of his temple When Babylon conquered Israel, they took away the holy vessels out of the temple. And later on, Nebuchadnezzar's grandson, who was then in control of Babylon, had a drunken party, and they were drinking wine and getting hammered out of those holy vessels taken out of the temple. You see, they just, they just went way too far in so many ways. Verse 29. Call together the archers against Babylon, all ye who bend the bow. Camp against it round about. Let none thereof escape. Recompense her according to her work, according to all that she has done, do unto her. For she has been proud against the Lord, against the Holy One of Israel. Therefore shall her young men fall in the streets, and all her men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Lord. What day is that? Well, that's the day when God fights against them. That's the day when the Medes and the Persians are sent by God to destroy them. And they can fight hard, and they can fight valiantly, but it's not going to do any good, because when, when God fights against you, you're going to lose, no matter what you have going for you, humanly speaking. 31 behold I am against you O thou most proud saith the Lord God of hosts for your day has come the time that I will visit you verse 32 and the most proud shall stumble and fall and none shall raise him up and I will kindle a fire in his cities and it shall devour all round about him Babylon's downfall Really, when it comes right down to it, was her pride. She was arrogant toward the nations that she defeated. She was puffed up. She rejoiced in her victories, in the destruction of these countries. But worst of all, she was arrogant toward God. And as a result, God is going to humble her. And she will know that she is nothing and they could talk smart about God and they could brag on their false gods God's not going to let it stand he will be exalted in the earth and he will not share that exalted position with anyone and he will not have anyone belittle him and get away with it because he is God and we should never forget as did Babylon that the strength and the success that we have, whatever it might be, comes from God. Our strength and our success should never lead us to think that we don't need God, but rather should cause us to remember that we should be grateful to God 
for everything that we have. Babylon never did learn that lesson. So they were destroyed as a nation permanently. Verse 33. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the children of Israel and the children of Judah were oppressed together and all who took them captives held them fast. They refused to let them go. And that would be the Assyrians refused to let the northern tribes go. And the Babylonians refused to release the captives from the southern kingdom of Israel, which was Judah. But the Lord is in control of the judgment of his people. So he's going to release them if he has to destroy Babylon as he did Assyria. And he will. And that's what this is about. Verse 34. Their Redeemer is strong. Yeah, Babylon was tough. Not as tough as God. Not even in the same league. Not even on the same planet. Their Redeemer is strong. The Lord of hosts is his name. He shall thoroughly plead their cause that he may give rest to the land and disquiet the inhabitants of Babylon. So God's going to deliver his children. Verse 35. A sword is upon the Chaldeans, saith the Lord, and upon the inhabitants of Babylon, and upon her princes, and upon her wise men. The sword is upon them because God is Israel's strong redeemer, as he said. And the sword refers to the Medes and the Persians. Verse 36, a sword is upon the liars, and they shall dote. A sword is upon the mighty, her mighty men, and they shall be dismayed. And now that's shocking, that the brave and tough soldiers from Babylon would be dismayed at anything. Verse 37, the sword is upon their horses and upon their chariots and upon all the mingled people who are in the midst of her and they shall become as women. A sword is upon her treasures and they shall be robbed. See, I mean, it was like everything that they trusted in failed them. And that's the way it is for anybody. If you put your trust for a secure future in a secure eternity, you put your trust in anyone or anything other than the Lord Jesus Christ, it's going to fail you. And, and you're not going to end up neutral in this thing. You're going to end up suffering. 38. A drought is upon her waters, and they shall be dried up, for it is a land of graven images, and they are made upon their idols. So, God's going to hit anything that's worth anything in Babylon. All the stuff that they trusted in. All the stuff that they thought would give them security and a good life probably forever. Their idols are going to fail them. And they're going to be terrified when they see their great empire crumble. Verse 39. Therefore the wild beast of the desert with the wild beast of the islands shall dwell there and the owls shall dwell therein and it shall be no more inhabited forever neither shall it be indwelt neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation completely demolished completely destroyed as God overthrew verse 40 Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof saith the Lord so shall no man abide there neither shall any son of man dwell therein well you know when, when the Medes and the Persians overthrew Babylon Babylon um, 
they weren't completely destroyed immediately like Sodom and Gomorrah it continued to exist the city did for several hundred years but eventually it was destroyed and Babylon will never make a comeback verse 41 behold a people shall come from the north and a great nation and many kings shall be raised up from the coast of the earth they shall hold the bow and the lance they are cruel and will not show mercy their voice shall roar like the sea and they shall ride upon horses every one put in array like a man to the battle against thee O daughter of Babylon and the Medes and the Persians were, uh, were an empire that never showed any mercy Babylon didn't show any mercy to the nations that they conquered contrary to the will of God and they will not be shown any mercy verse 43 the king of Babylon has heard the report of then and his hands waxed feeble anguish took hold of him and pangs of a woman in travail yeah his hands waxed feeble all right refers to that grandson of Nebuchadnezzar Belteshazzar remember the story of the handwriting on the wall while he was having his drunken party drinking wine strong drink out of the holy vessels of the temple oh he was just showing off he was having himself a high time and a hand appeared and wrote judgment on the wall in their party room and he got, he got so shook up that his knees literally knocked together 44 behold he shall come up like a lion from the swelling of Jordan unto the habitation of the strong but I will make them suddenly run away from her and who is a chosen man that I may appoint over her for who is like me and who will appoint me the time and who is that shepherd who will stand before me God says who's going to do what I want to have done verse 45 therefore hear ye the counsel of the Lord that he has taken against Babylon and his purposes that he has purposed against the land of the Chaldeans surely the least of the flock shall draw them out surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them at the noise of the taking of Babylon the earth is moved and the cry is heard among the nations people just won't be able to believe it when it happens because it was it was undefeated and unmovable as far as the other nations were concerned you, you can't beat Babylon there's no way so when Cyrus and the Medes and the Persians destroyed it it was it was one of the most amazing stories in the history of the world but we know why they went down it was because of their great sin God didn't overlook the sins of his people so he certainly was going to punish the sins of Babylon who had no connection to him at all either by covenant or by promise and you're going down too and so is every other sinner who has not repented and received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior because only in Christ are you promised eternal life so you must repent you must ask Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior or you will be punished by God forever in hell because your sins are not paid for and the rest of you who know Christ and you have a hunger for the Word of God again I want to encourage you to go to the Bible verse by verse dot com and begin a verse by verse study through the entire Bible using my audio Bible commentaries one more time that's at the Bible verse by verse dot com and if the Word of God blesses you if you are fed then I would ask that you would remember that this is a faith ministry 
that I depend on the prayers and the financial support of those who are blessed by the Word of God. And you can give in a secure method. Just click the donate button as the Lord may lead at the BibleVerseByVerse.com. I got to leave myself right now because I'm out of time. But we're going to be in chapter 51 of Jeremiah next time. And I hope you can join me as we begin to wrap up this book. Until then, Michael Moret for Scripture Verse by Verse. So long, everyone.